Kinder Marriage. Be realistic. Hi everyone, it's Maria Maumela. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, and for sharing my videos. Um, I want to speak about Kinder Marriage. Let us be real. Marriage is marriage. Marriage is marriage. Indeed, marriage was ordained by the Lord so much, uh, even more, kingdom marriage. Even more, kingdom marriage. So now, anything that is of the Lord will attract some attack from the enemy. So how ignorant of us if we think that we are just going to walk through the kingdom marriage process uh, through its hurdles and get into marriage and just have a an easy um an easy road forgetting that we have been in relationships we understand that relationships are work but there are people who think that just because you are with someone whom who's ordained for you someone who's born of your bone and uh, flesh of your flesh it means things are gonna go smoothly um, and there won't be like any glitches or any things to work through that is not that that is that is not good. The Bible says when I was a child, I talk like a child, I reason like a child. But now that I've become a man, I've put away childish ways, meaning we put away childish ways of doing things and childish ways of thinking. We are not going to um learn things through osmosis. We need to learn. We need to learn. Like a lot of us are waiting on, on God to bless us with the marriage. But how much effort are we putting in? It's okay to go. It's okay to pray. It is good to pray. But what else are we putting in? Like where, where is the work of our hands? What um, what have we what have we learned? What what did we do in preparation for that? Okay. Um, I was listening. Um, I think it was a month back when I was listening to a kingdom couple. Um, this is a pastor and uh, and his wife. This man was a pastor long before the wife came into the picture. So when she, when they met, he was already a pastor, okay? So now they were speaking about the hardships they went through and how, they, um, how the woman, how the wife um, almost left the home within the first month. So this, this is a, this is a, this should be an eye opener to people who think that just because a marriage is ordained, just because um, you people love each other from the heart, you understand each other, this and this and that, it means everything is just going to be like a, a, a walk in the park. A marriage is a garden. You have to work hard at it. You have to tender it every day. Kingdom marriages, there's a grace that is from the Lord. The Lord is there to help us, but there is a need to be realistic. It is, it is not wise to be thinking that everything is going to be smooth sail. And I can ask you now, is, is everything a smooth, a smooth sail right now concerning your, your, your journey to marriage? Is it a smooth sail? So how then do we think that when the union comes together or when God uh, blesses you with the marriage, um, what, what makes you think? That the enemy is just going to give up and throw in the towel. No, we need to keep praying. Like you, you keep praying for your spouse. You keep praying for your marriage. You keep praying for God's protection. Okay, the husband prays for the wife. The wife prays for the husband to cover the children. And you keep on working um, on the relationship. We need more than just the Bible to teach us about marriage. There's a lot of books on on marriages, um, there's a lot of uh, material out there on marriages. As the body of Christ, let us be wise and equip ourselves. And there are people who do not even believe in in um, in marital counseling. You know, for me, people like that. Like I have been married before, so people who believe that in a kingdom marriage, um, there is no need to involve other people. It should just be them. Both couples and the Holy Spirit, like everybody's got the everybody's got the right to choose. That's what they want to believe. But for someone who's been married before, um, I know like what the different phases of, of, of marriages. Okay, the honeymoon phase does end. And marriages are different. Some people face the hardships within the first year, and some people just go through a honeyful a honeymoon phase and only get to meet up with challenges up ahead. But it's good to have a third person whom both of you respect to help to resolve conflict. 
in a marriage as two people start to live together it's like two people are, are in a are on a mission to merge like this and to be one now these are two different individuals for, from two different homes things were done differently the beliefs are different and both of these people need to come together to form new ways of doing things in this new home and um abandon certain traditional practices certain cultural practices in order for the marriage to thrive but it is the both of them who decide what do we keep what do we hold on to what do we work on what is the new tradition of our home you know what uh, they, they get to both form their, their tradition and they get to even add more to the traditional practices even because one person brings the best from their history, another one the best from their history, they put together and they make something beautiful. There is a need to be realistic. There is a need to be realistic, okay? We can be spiritual all we want, but we cannot leave out the practical, the practical out of it. Even with Jesus was with his disciples teaching them, but there was a time when he had to send them out two by two for them to go and uh, put into practice that which they have learned. So as we walk into our marriages, we get to practice what we learned. What did we learn? What did we learn? Let us expose ourselves to things that teach us about marriage, to material that, that, uh, that builds us. Okay, the more equipped we are, the, the higher our success of peace and joy in our marriage. Hallelujah. Thank you guys. God bless.